In today's video, I take you along with me for a cruise on American Melody, the latest cruise ship from American Cruise Lines. We sail up the Mississippi River under some beautiful bridges and through quite a few locks. With a rainy start in St. Louis, where all the trees were still green, and ending up about 400 miles north in Red Wing, Minnesota, where a lot of the trees had turned to spectacular colors for fall. I saw so many interesting things on this cruise, including a lot of great trains. The cruise itself began in Alton, Illinois. That's just across and upriver a little bit from St. Louis. But I had signed up for something American Cruise Line offers, and which I recommend, a stay the night before the cruise at the Four Seasons Hotel in St. Louis. And that was one of the nicest hotels I've ever stayed in. I definitely suggest you book the pre-cruise stay at the Four Seasons. In the morning, we all met in the lobby and then boarded a bus for a tour of St. Louis. Unfortunately, it was a rainy day, but I'm glad the rain was before the cruise, not during it. The bus gave us a look around St. Louis, including some of the historic neighborhoods and some of the things that put St. Louis on the map. I got a kick out of seeing this historic railroad station, which had been turned into a hotel. With the rain, there wasn't any point in getting out of the bus, except at a beautiful historic church, the St. Louis Cathedral, now well over a hundred years old. I'm not really one for touring historic churches, but even I was impressed with the architecture of this beautiful building. The mosaics cover 83,000 square feet, making it the largest mosaic collection in the world outside of Russia. After our bus tour of St. Louis, the rain tapered off, and the bus took us over the river to Alton, Illinois, where American Melody was waiting for us. We had a nice lunch, and before long, the ship got underway, and we were heading up the Mississippi River. The rain had finished, and the weather would get much better for the entire rest of the cruise. But for the rest of this first day, it was cloudy and gloomy looking. And the scenery along this stretch of the river was nothing to write home about, so it was a good day to get unpacked and explore the ship. There will be another video coming later, which will give you a full ship tour, including my cabin. The ship sailed up the river all night, and when we woke up the morning of day two, we were in historic Hannibal, Missouri, the river community best known as the boyhood home of author Samuel Clemens, also known as Mark Twain, author of The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, written in 1876, and The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, written in 1884. I even spotted a Huck Finn lookalike playing by the river next to the ship. There was a busy rail line right next to where we were docked, and I got a kick out of seeing and listening to the freight trains go through town all day long. There was a street festival going on in Hannibal the day we were there, with lots of great food available, as well as arts and crafts that you could buy. I enjoyed walking through it and taking it all in. And then later, I took a hike up the hill to visit the Mark Twain Memorial Lighthouse, which sits up on a hillside overlooking the town and the river. So you have to climb quite a few steps to get up there. This is just the first set. There were a lot more after this. But I didn't mind, since I needed a little exercise to offset all the good food I'd be eating this week. The lighthouse was built in 1933 as a public works project under President Franklin D. Roosevelt. FDR visited the lighthouse after it was completed, and in later years, it was visited by President John F. Kennedy, as well as President Bill Clinton. We also saw the riverboat Mark Twain while our ship was docked in Hannibal. If you're a Mark Twain fan, this is definitely a town you should visit. 
Our ship traveled up the river all night, and right around sunrise, we arrived at our next stop, the town of Fort Madison, Iowa, a pretty little town with a very busy rail line. More about that in a minute. This was the first place as we headed north up the Mississippi that I saw any fall colors in the trees. I love that beautiful red maple tree there. The town of Fort Madison is named after the first U.S. military fort and trading post to be built in the upper Mississippi region. We're looking at a replica of the fort here. The original version of the fort was built in 1808, and during the War of 1812, the U.S. Army had to abandon the fort, so they burned it down so that it wouldn't fall into enemy hands. This replica of the fort was actually built mostly by volunteer inmates at the nearby Iowa State Penitentiary. And I took a tour of the penitentiary in addition to taking a tour of the fort. This maximum security penitentiary, established in 1839, housed inmates for over 175 years until they were finally moved over to a new state-of-the-art facility in 2015. This was the first time I ever spent any time in a jail, and I certainly hope it'll be the last time. Now, I'm a train buff, so for me, the most fun thing that I got to do while visiting Ford Madison involved trains. There's two very busy rail lines running through Ford Madison, and I'm told that an average of 100 trains a day come through here. I had some free time, so I walked over to the train station because they had something that really caught my eye, an old Santa Fe caboose. I'm into model railroading, and I have a red Santa Fe caboose like this in G scale. Notice that this caboose is number 235. It is exactly 235 miles from Chicago to Fort Madison, Iowa. And this caboose, which now sits permanently here in Fort Madison, was known back in the day as the Fort Madison caboose. I was delighted to find this caboose had not only been preserved, but it was wide open for anyone interested to walk through it and explore. I even got to climb up into the cupola and sit in the seat where crew members would sit to get a view forward. It was very cool to be able to explore this Santa Fe caboose, to see the bunks where the crew slept, the stove they cooked on, and to just be free to check out everything about this caboose. The train station and the caboose were very close to where our ship was docked, but I think I was one of the only passengers that walked over here to check it out. I loved exploring the caboose and the train station and watching several freight trains pass through. Strategically placed at a park between the train station and where the cruise ship was docked was a trailer selling barbecue. Now, I love smoked brisket, and when I saw that they had that, I immediately decided to skip the free lunch aboard the ship and pay for lunch here instead. Good old Midwestern barbecue food. The brisket was delicious, and the cheesy potatoes a nice bonus, but the real surprise for me was that the baked beans had the slight taste of brown sugar, just like my mom used to make. After a real nice day in Fort Madison, it was time to get back on board the ship, and as American Melody pulled away from the dock, we continued north up the Mississippi River. And as we headed out of town, we passed by the replica of the historic fort, as well as the old factory where they used to make Schieffer pens back in the day. Walter Schieffer developed and patented a revolutionary fountain pen over a hundred years ago in the back room of his father's jewelry store here in Fort Madison. Schieffer Pen Company went on to become a very big deal at its peak, employing over a thousand people at their factory here in Fort Madison. Now, they were bought out by BIC in 1997, 
and Bick closed the Fort Madison factory in 2008 and moved production overseas. It's Iowa on the left side of the river and Illinois on the right. This bridge is at the north end of Fort Madison, and they have to rotate the bridge to create a passage for big ships like ours. As we passed the bridge, we got a real nice look at it, and it's easy to see that this bridge does double duty. Automobiles drive up on the top portion of the bridge, and trains run down below on the bottom section. North of Fort Madison, we reached one of many dams along the Mississippi. During our cruise, we encountered over 20 dams, but a lot of those were at night while we were all sleeping. I'll show you this one because we encountered it during the day, so it was well lit for the video. To get past each of these dams, you have to go through a set of locks. That process takes about 20 minutes or so in real time, so I'm going to speed up the video that you're watching here so that it doesn't take 20 minutes of your time to see how this works. The first step in getting through these locks is for them to open up the first gate. The river level on the south side of the dam is lower than the river level on the north side. The locks are like an elevator for ships, rising the ship up from the level of the water on the south side of the dam to the level of the water on the north side. Once the ship has pulled all the way in past the open gate that is now behind the ship, that gate can be closed. We're looking at a camera that I placed at the back of our ship, so this is the view behind the ship. You can see the sun is low in the sky and will be setting soon. And again, this video is sped up because this all happens fairly slowly in real time. You can see the gate behind the ship is closing. Once that gate behind the ship is fully closed, then the real fun happens. They start pumping in water, lots of it, to raise the level of the water from what it was on the south side of the dam to what it is on the north side of the dam. That's the part that's just like an elevator for big ships like ours. While we're watching this here, let me just mention that if you're interested in booking a cruise with American Cruise Lines, or any cruise line actually, or even a land-based vacation instead of a cruise, feel free to use the services of my travel agent, Caitlin Gallagher. You can pause the video to copy down her contact information, or you can just find it in the video's description. Now, I didn't actually use Caitlin to book this trip because I was cruising for free this time as a guest of American Cruise Lines. They brought me on board to shoot photos and videos of American Melody, their newest ship. I sent every photo and video clip I shot this week to their head office for them to use, and then I was able to make this video for my YouTube channel from those same clips. Once the water level has been raised up to match what's on the north side of the dam, the gates in front of the ship can be opened. And once those gates are fully opened, the lock operator fires off a horn to let the ship's captain know that he's free to get underway and sail out of the locks and past the dam. The next morning, the ship was in Davenport, Iowa. That morning, the crew was busy bringing provisions on board, as well as sending off bags of garbage to the landfill. Most of the other passengers headed off on excursions, but I was feeling kind of lazy and decided to just stay on board today. There was a railroad bridge just behind the ship, and it was a nice sunny day, so I just sat out on the deck with my camera and waited for a train to come along. Of course, it was just a matter of time before one did. Now, I thought it was interesting not being from the Midwest. I didn't even realize that there was an Iowa Interstate Railroad, but yeah, there is. I found out it operates between Chicago, Illinois and Omaha, Nebraska. It was formed in 1984 using track and equipment from the Rock Island Railroad after it went out of business. By the way, look at those trees there, showing a little bit of color. The further north we get this week, the more color we'll see in the trees. The locomotives at the front of this train are General Electric ES44AC locomotives. And once the locomotives got about halfway across the bridge, 
they came to a stop. I looked down the track a ways, and it was easy to see why the train had stopped. This section of the railroad bridge spanning the river had been opened up to let some ship traffic go by. But after a while, the bridge spun around for use by the train. This section of the video is sped up quite a bit because in real life, this happens very slowly. Once closed up and the train bridge was back to normal, the train fired off its horn and got going again. A big, long, heavy train like this accelerates very slowly, so I'll just jump ahead to when it had built up a little speed. And since not everyone is a train fanatic like I am, we'll just conclude this part of the story now and move on. Our ship, American Melody, left Davenport about two in the afternoon, and we spent the rest of the day and all night cruising up the Mississippi to our next destination. This was actually one of my favorite parts of the entire week. This was really what I had been looking forward to, sitting out on deck and just seeing all the interesting things along the banks of the Mississippi. Here's a little montage of things I saw along the river that afternoon. retired last year, but for 28 years before that, I worked at a nuclear power plant in California. So I got a real kick when our ship sailed right past the Quad Cities Nuclear Generating Station located just north of Cordova, Illinois. It might not look like much to you, but there's a lot of interesting things going on inside that plant, and it's making a heck of a lot of electricity. As I said earlier, our ship would sail all afternoon and all night long up the Mississippi River as we headed towards our next destination, Dubuque, Iowa. Right around sunset, we were going past Clinton, Iowa, and it was incredibly beautiful between the sunset, the river, going past some bridges, and a full moon.
The next day, our ship American Melody was in Dubuque, Iowa. It was an absolutely gorgeous day again, just like the day before. I think back to that first rainy day in St. Louis. If we had had to have a rainy day, I'm glad it was that first day. The weather sure has been great since then. Dubuque is at the junction of Iowa, Illinois, and Wisconsin, so they call this region the Tri-State Area. The city was named after Julian Dubuque, who came here in 1785, the first permanent European settler. These days, Dubuque has a population of about 60,000 people. This was the first time on this cruise that we got to look at one of American Melody's most unusual features. At each of our stops along the river so far, we've come up alongside a dock, and getting on and off the ship was done from a gangway on one side of the ship or the other. But today in Dubuque, we're using a forward gangway, which works in an interesting way. There's a cover at the bow of the ship that pops up, and this opens up the bow so that a gangway can be extended outward to the shore. It's a little bit like the ship sticking out her tongue. You don't see ocean cruise ships doing anything like this. It's kind of interesting to see. Each day, as we get a little further north, I'm enjoying seeing the fall colors of the trees. This is the Dubuque River Walk, right next to where our ship was docked, and the trees were showing some nice color. After spending much of the day in Dubuque, our ship American Melody got underway again. Right there at the north end of Dubuque, we came up to a railroad bridge. And you can see they were expecting us, as the bridge had been rotated, to allow our ship to get through. It was really interesting. When we finally got up to the bridge, I pointed the camera down the tracks. And look what the trains do right after they cross the bridge. They go into a tunnel. Well, that would be fun to do in a passenger train. I assume that Amtrak runs through here, so imagine being in one of those Amtrak dome cars crossing the bridge and then going through that tunnel. That would be cool. There was another bridge coming up immediately after the train bridge, and even though this was a Tuesday, a work day for most people, there were a lot of pleasure boats out having fun on the river. Perhaps some retired folk like me out there living the dream. This bridge connects Iowa and Wisconsin on Highway 61. The next morning, I got up early enough to see the sunrise as our ship was heading up the Mississippi River. It sure was a beautiful sight. We weren't expected to get to our next port of call until around noon today, so after breakfast, I just sat out on the deck and enjoyed the views, including an increasing amount of color in the trees. The further north we got, the more dramatic the colors were getting in those leaves. This really was one of my favorite parts of the entire experience I had on American Melody, just sitting out on the deck, enjoying the views of the Mississippi and seeing lots of beauty all around me in the countryside. A few hours later that morning, skies had cleared up as we came into Winona, Minnesota. Other than the first day and some cloudiness earlier this morning, we really had enjoyed some fantastic fall weather on this trip. And as the crew prepared for the ship to dock in Winona, there was nothing but blue skies up above. That's Wisconsin on the other side of the river there. And there are bald eagles in the trees along the river in that area. We'll get a look at some of them in just a minute. I had the drone in the air as we were docking in Winona. You probably figured that out already as we look at these aerial shots. You get a good look at American Melody here with the city in the background. I love flying my drone. As I'm flying it, I have a full view of what the drone's camera is seeing. And it gives me, as I'm using the controls to move the drone around, a sense that I'm flying, but without the danger. There is a real joy in flying the drone for me, especially on a beautiful day like this. And what you're seeing here is basically just me having fun flying in a circular pattern around the ship. 
We did eventually get docked, and a lot of the other passengers got into buses for tours in Winona. But I signed up for a different kind of tour this day. This was the only tour during this cruise that I paid for. All the other tours I did in the other places we visited were included in the price of the cruise. What you're about to see here in Winona sent me back $25. We got on a small tour boat that was piloted by this guy. He was hilarious, a real character. We were in search of bald eagles along the river, and there were a lot of them. I had my Canon DSLR camera along with me, and I had my biggest zoom lens mounted on it. It did a great job of getting videos and photos of these bald eagles. Just about everybody else on the tour, except for me, only had a cell phone camera with them, so I don't think any of them got videos quite like this. The tour boat captain did get us quite close to the eagles several times, which allowed me to get shots like this. The boat was shaking a bit, which is what was causing this shakiness in the video. I was really happy with this tour. I wanted to get out there and see bald eagles and get some photos and videos of them. And as you can see, that's exactly what happened. It was a really unique cruising experience and absolutely worth the $25 I paid for the boat tour. As I mentioned, I was shooting both video and still photos. Here's the best still photo I got that day. I think it deserves to get printed and framed and put up on the wall of our house. American Melody sailed upriver all night long, and when I woke up in the morning, we were in Lake Pepin, which is a naturally occurring lake on the Mississippi River on the border between Minnesota and Wisconsin, and just south of our next port of call, Red Wing, Minnesota. Overnight, skies had gotten very cloudy. There was a totally different feel outside from the sunny days we had experienced the last five days or so. It was kind of foggy and drizzly. I was wearing my warmest coat and a cap on my head as I flew the drone from the top deck of our ship to get these aerial shots. A few hours later, after a nice breakfast, it was still cloudy, but the fog and the mist had cleared off, and with the sun lighting things up better now, I could really see how the fall colors were just getting amazing. A few hours from now, we would reach Red Wing, which is as far north as the ship goes. So this right here this is one of the things that I came to see, the fall colors in Minnesota, and it definitely did not disappoint. Look at that. We arrived at the pier here in Red Wing, Minnesota at about 1030 in the morning. It was still cloudy, as you can see, but it would clear up quite a bit after lunch. As the ship was pulling up to the dock, I managed to get three things I like into this one shot. A dog, a train car over on the left of the shot, and that beautiful red maple tree. It seems like my kind of town here in Red Wing. When the weather cleared up after lunch, I put the drone in the air for some aerial shots of Red Wing.
that evening, it was our last night on board the ship. We'll be flying home tomorrow from Minneapolis. For this last night on board, Mother Nature did not disappoint. She gave us this incredible sunset as a finale to this fantastic cruise up the Mississippi River. This is only the first of several videos I'm planning on doing about my cruise on American Melody. Give me some time to do more video editing and then at some point I'll post a video about the food and entertainment and onboard experience on American Melody. And I'll talk about the thing that surprised me the most about this cruise, the great attitude that the crew had. I suspect there will also be another video that takes you deck by deck on a tour of the ship, including a full tour of the cabin that I stayed in. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Feel free to share a link to it on social media if you think your friends and family would like it. And subscribe to my channel if you want to be sure to see my future videos. I'm Jim Zim. Thanks for watching.